What if I told you that the key to social media success isn't about being all over the place, but about being laser focused on one platform? Yeah, I know it goes against the grain of what we've been told, but stick around because we're about to unravel why this shift in mindset could be the missing piece you've been searching for. Welcome to the Influential Real Estate Marketing Podcast. I'm Amber Joy, once a struggling agent, now a referral powerhouse. I've been where you are, overwhelmed by countless marketing strategies and stuck in analysis paralysis. Alongside my husband and fellow coach, Jason, we've discovered what truly works in today's real estate market. Our mission is to guide you through the clutter of old school tactics to the clarity of modern, effective marketing that elevates your influence and your referrals in your local market. Join us and our remarkable guests as we share the blueprint for success that's working right now. Let's dive in. Hey, 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 everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. As usual, I have my co-host and fellow coach Jason here with me. Hello, hello. Hi. I am really excited about this because you are definitely an expert in social media and internet lead generation. So having you here to talk to our audience about this topic is, is truly special. Really well, that's is. So awesome. thank you. I got to figure out. Yeah. If I'm looking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I always like to make sure right, that so I'm looking in the right looking direction. at me You're like am i looking at you right mm -hmm. well could you dive into why you think it's so important for real estate agents to ditch the scattered social media game and zero in on just one platform and its special features yeah so uh for a little bit of background yes i've been coaching uh real estate social media marketing specifically for about 14 years and I remember when Facebook first hit our industry at around 2000, late 2009, 2010. Uh, and it was going to be like the answer to everyone's prayers. And it really was when it first came out. And right. You could post anything on Facebook and boom, you're going to get business. I mean, it really was a phenomenal time. Uh, when social <laughs> it was media a good time. Yes. It was a good time back <laughs> in the day. Um, but what we've seen over uh, the past 14 years is that we're still kind of stuck doing the same thing. I see, you know, agents are desperate. They see social media as something that can bring them business. They're told how to do it, but maybe not specifically. And, and they want to use it to like build relationships because that's going to get them business or for increasing their exposure, which again, will get them business. So it's, it's kind of been, if it's not working here, it's working everywhere. You know, so they post on Facebook, uh, they post on Instagram, but there really is no strategy. I mean, they're just like posting like everything. We see the yeah. same kind of post over and over and over again, and it's not effective, And but we're not stopping. It's also and just so, overwhelming, right? Because they're trying to be good at everything. I can relate to that. It's like, oh, I feel like I've got to be good at TikTok and I've got to be good at Reels and I've got to be good at a LinkedIn and I got to be good yeah. at YouTube. It's just so much. And, but instead of switching, right, like we go to a convention or we go to, you know, a panel of oh, these yeah. amazing agents and they're like, you need to be on TikTok or during the pandemic, you need to be Clubhouse and Clubhouse is going to get you tons of leads. And, and we don't switch, like we just add. And I think that's the, the causes a ton of stress with agents is they don't go, okay, let me stop this. And if this is going to get me business, let me start over here. It's yeah. Okay, I don't really get the thing that I'm doing now, but now I got to be on this thing. So let me add that to my plate. And it's yeah. just one too many plates to spin. Like how many times have we taught a class where I say, you know, how many of y'all have a, an X account or a Twitter account? Um, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and everyone would raise <laughs> their hands and they're like, all right, how many of you have no idea what your password is, you know, on that account because you've <laughs> never been in it. You signed up for it. <laughs> And, it's, and you could go down the list of you, you heard about the social channel, you signed up for the social channel, really didn't clear, get a clear strategy on the social media channel. You just added it to everything else you're doing. And now you're just kind of winging it. I feel like you're picking on me, Jason, because that was me for <laughs> sure. You know, it was like I, I had a Twitter account. I know it's called X now, but at the time it was Twitter. 
And I would really only use it at conventions and other big places where I'm trying to see other people's ahas. But then yeah. uh, yeah, I would go at six months without posting again <laughs> until the next <laughs> convention, right? Uh, but yes, I am. I know that real estate agents often find themselves posting repetitive content across multiple social media platforms without really seeing the desired result like you're just saying. And I know mm -hmm. I can relate to that personally because I am was trying to do so many different things that they were all watered down and I didn't really see any momentum. And I know that other agents are probably feeling that same pain. So can you share some common pitfalls of this approach of being on all the platforms and how it hinders their ability to build meaningful relationships and really hinders their ability to generate new business. Well, I think the, the most common pitfall is the fact that it's not effective. It's not getting you business. It's not getting you consistent business. I don't like saying it's not getting you business because then out come the stories of, no, I, I had someone reach out to me on insert name of channel and I hadn't heard from them forever and they, you know, sent me a deal. Um, consistency. Now, the, the point of marketing uh, is, is, is to get you business. I mean, that's kind of why we're doing it. That's the end goal. And so the biggest yeah. pitfall I see is that you're doing a, a, a marketing strategy that's simply not working, but you continue to do it. So just to clarify, you're not saying that they shouldn't be on social media. You're not saying they can't get business on social media. You're saying the pitfall is focusing on too many platforms on social media and it really being more of a watered down strategy. Am I, am I getting the big picture of that? I think you are. Uh, it's it's being on too many platforms, and you never had a, a strategy on the first one you chose. And the not strategy mm -hmm. strategy is just carrying over to all the other platforms you're adding to your business. <laughs> that should be on the a t shirt. Like, do you have the not strategy strategy? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what most of us have. And yeah, how's that working out for you? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we've heard it change over the years, you know, posting to post or, or just, you know, post and ghost or, you know, it's, but it's, you know, spaghetti marketing, if we like to call it. Just <laughs> let me try this. Let yeah. me try this. See what sticks. See what you know, sticks. although they're, you know, imperfect action, there is something to be said for that. But we are exhausting ourselves when that doesn't need to be. So, yeah. um, so what is the solution, Jay, is to just choose a platform? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So I want to, so first thing let's talk about, let's talk about choosing the right platform. I think that's, that's kind yeah, of where how, it needs to begin. Choosing a platform would be awesome, but how do you choose the right one is kind of a, a deeper question to it. Yeah. So how can agents determine which platform and, and really sub feature a line that, that really aligns with their goals and also who their ideal client is or their target audience? Well, I think you, I think you nailed it. It's, you know, how do I choose a platform? The first thing I think is you need to choose a platform that you enjoy. You know, um, I, do you in, enjoy concept. short form con <laughs> content or long form content? You know, do you see yourself making long form content? Do you now you know, kind of you, tell our audience what that means in case they don't even know what short form, short form versus long form means. Short form content would be, you know, Instagram reels or any kind of short form uh, video uh, versus long form video like a YouTube. You know, you could have YouTube videos that are 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you know, what have you. Um, okay. This being on YouTube as a long form piece of content, you know, you guys watching us talk for 30, 40 minutes or whatever um, versus a short form quick little snippet and then go, uh, let me teach you something really quick. Let me give you a little know how and I'm out. Um, you know, what do you like? What do you enjoy? What platforms do you enjoy? Number one. And number two is where is your ideal audience hanging out? Mm -hmm. And I say that as number two, because I think that if you were to focus on a platform that you enjoy and you were being an authority in that platform, you would then attract your ideal client. Um, if yeah. you were doing it the, the correct way. So I don't really say, start with your ideal client where they at and then go there because what if they're like you know i am just fighting tooth and nail that i want to you know start blogging because that's my where ideal client are big readers or you know i'm going to be on linkedin like no one's clamoring to just you know just <laughs> nail it on linkedin i i know that linkedin's a really great strategy some people are really awesome at it i'm just saying for the masses that we talk to linkedin's not the first choice 
Right. Well, they're not hanging out there for hours and hours, although LinkedIn has some major opportunities on it Absolutely. where we see people spending the most time. It is not there versus the other apps. Correct. So those two criteria for picking is pick the one you like, mm -hmm. the one that you want to be on. And right. would you say that that is really the one that they are on themselves a lot? Do you think that a lot of times is the one that they like or... Do those have nothing to do with each other? No, I think that that is like, which the one that you enjoy? Like you enjoy TikTok, you enjoy Instagram. There are other platforms that you don't, aren't on as much, maybe because your tastes have changed. Like you were massive on Pinterest at one time, but now you kind of not really do it anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's a really good sign that you enjoy that platform. Um, it's just a matter of asking yourself, why do I enjoy this platform? Do I enjoy the different avenues? You know, so it's yeah. about, but there's one last thing that we have to talk about um, when it comes to choosing the right platform is not only do you have to choose the right platform, but you really, really need to consider seriously choosing the right sub feature of that platform. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, whenever we consult with agents, you know, number one, it, it, uh, it just, gets to me every time they're like, okay, so what are you doing to market your business? They're like, okay, well, we do social media. I'm like, I, I don't know what that means. I really, I really don't. I, that could mean anything. Um, that is the biggest red flag of, I don't have a plan. If you answer the question, what are you doing to market your business? And you say, oh, I do social media. You don't know what you're doing because it's like, what do you do? Oh, I do real estate. Okay. But you know, but if I was asking <laughs> deeper questions, like I really love working with veterans. So that's my focus. Okay. But that's, that's what you do. Um, but in their defense, um, when they say that to us, it does set off a red flag, but there's no judgment there because it's not really your fault. You guys, there is so much information going around that it does yeah. produce analysis paralysis. And so I know that your heart comes from, Hey, let's fix this because it, it stinks putting content out there and not seeing the results that you want to see. It, it is. And, and you're absolutely right. And in no way is it the agent's fault because all agents do is, is do what they're recommended to do. They do what they're told. You know, they're told to post X, Y, and Z. It's not effective, but they're still told it because they've always been told that. And so, no, I, well, I definitely get that. And also it can be effective for one agent. Doesn't mean it's going to be effective for you. And the reason yeah. is some of the people we see blowing up on TikTok, for instance, you notice they're also on reels and other platforms, but they didn't start out that way. It's kind of like no. Gary Vee. They started out just inundating one platform that they really wanted to be on. And then they were able to take that large audience from the one platform over to the other. It's not that they started everywhere. And like yeah. you said, their vibe is going to attract their tribe. Um, eventually they will find their people on there. Absolutely. And, and you brought up the, the specific point that I was trying to make is you need to pick a sub feature of that channel. So right now for TikTok, there really is only one feature of TikTok, which is short form video content. Obviously, I know you can do longer forms, but it's short form well, lives. video. Yeah, they have lives. Yeah. So, so a sub feature is, am I going to, I'll use uh, Instagram because I think it's probably the easiest and most widely used. Am I going to be posting on Instagram uh, or am I going to be doing Instagram reels and that's going to be my focus? Or am I going to be doing Instagram lives and that's my focus? You know, mm. there's nothing wrong um, with you picking one sub feature where I see a challenge is you're trying to do everything. Like I'm trying to post on Instagram. Oh, no, but I got to do some reels. Oh, but I got to do uh, Instagram live because that's the thing, but I haven't figured it out yet. And, then, and, and again, that in and of itself is three different marketing strategies. And so when we don't understand something, we simply go the copy paste route, which is let me put the exact same content on all my stuff, knowing that you cannot talk the same on the environment. You, you're limited to 280 characters on X. But on, I think it's Facebook, you can do like 5,000. Okay, so you have to talk differently on those platforms. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Cause if you're doing short form content, YouTube is 60 second max. Whereas Instagram reels is going to be uh, 90 seconds. TikTok doesn't even have that limit anymore. They are going all out and getting up to 15 minutes. I think now when we film yeah. this. Um, so could you talk about the video leadership quadrant strategy by James S. Anderson. I know that's something that you really like to talk about. Now, yeah. how can real estate agents apply this framework to showcase their character, 
connect with their audience and build credibility that drives action. Okay, so we just talked about choosing the right platform. And so the next thing we need to talk about is how do we implement what's called the authority strategy um, is what I like to call it. So um, we were at a mastermind. This was with uh, Alaric talking about YouTube ads. And uh, yeah, um, really, really good strategy is called, I want to make sure I'm getting it right. It's called the Video Leadership Quadrant uh, Strategy. James S. Anderson, okay. super, super great guy. Uh, he came up with this. And so when you find your platform, when you find the sub feature of your platform that you want to be on, how then do you go through the process and establish your credibility with your audience? Well, what is the biggest thing that agents are always after? We, we've been taught this since I got my license. It's, you know, you want people to know you like you trust you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Know you like you trust you. Yeah. Know you like you trust you. I've heard that echoed so many different times. Um, okay, so how do we go about doing that? How Once do I do that? Yeah. So how do we go about doing this? It's, it's, it's easier than we think. I think maybe not anyone listening here, but sometimes as agents, we overthink things. <laughs> Guilty party of one. Okay. <laughs> so, so here are the, the four things that you need um, to establish that, that authority strategy. So the first thing is you need to show them who you are. Okay. By showing people who you are, and babe, can you talk a little bit about how do I show someone who I am? Well, I'm not sure of the context of this, so you'll have to give me a little bit more well, detail because I'm not familiar to, with uh, this. Yeah, you're right. Let me choose a, a platform and then this will probably, so let's take Instagram Reels because we just started okay. talking about it. Lead me how through what you're going through. How do I show someone who I am? In fact, let me start big picture because I know you, <laughs> I was going straight to detail, straight to detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, are the, here are the four things. You need to show them who you are. You need to show them or bring them into your world. Okay. You need to prove that you can help and you need to invite them to take the next steps. Those are the four things. I'll repeat Those them. The show them things. who you are, bring them into your world, prove that you can help and invite them to take the next step. So what am I doing? By showing you who I am, I'm showing you my character that's going to have you know me. By bringing, mm. into you my, bringing you into my world, I'm going to connect with you. That means you're going to, the end result of that is like me. And then by proving to you that I can help, that is all about credibility. That means that you can trust me, know, like, and trust. And then the last one is inviting, inviting the audience to take the next steps. That's the call to action. That's something that we just need to have in everything that we do. Okay? Okay. So that is, that is the... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, just kind of take us through what does that look like then? So if we're on a platform, we've chosen our ideal platform, and I'm looking to implement these four steps, kind of give me an example of how would I go about doing that? You can either do this as individuals, or you can put tiny components of each of these into the same video. So me showing you who I am is just showing you how I do business, what are my perspectives, what are my thoughts, how do I talk, how do I dress, what, where do I get to hang out. Obviously, there needs to be some kind of alignment with the, with the ideal client that you're going after, but they still need to know who you are. I cannot be, uh, we used to call it, the, the days of being Batman marketing are over. That means you were one way you know, professionally, but yet completely different personally. Um, social mm -hmm. media has blended those two individuals together. And so I need to see how you really are. What do you think about things? Um, and that's going to have people want to work with you. Gotcha. Does that make so sense? you're, are you trying to accomplish all four of these things in one post or you're saying they could be individual? I think you just said that, but I wanted to clarify. <laughs> they can, so I could either do, uh, either way and, and. So it's hard because I know some people like, no, what do you mean? Either way, that's too much. Um, it's it's super easy to say, hey, in today's video, I'm going to do my perspective on something that happened inside of real estate. Okay, that is going to showcase you my thought process, my, my you know, how I do things. Um, for me, I guess it's kind of hard to, to individually do these without bringing in tiny pieces of the other one. So let's we'll right. say the real estate scenario. I'm going to talk about a real estate scenario based upon my viewpoint or my opinion on, on industry news going on in our industry. I'm going to have my character come through just because how I talk, I talk fast, you know, I'm, I'm more analytical than most people, less on the empathy side of things. Um, but inside of that, I will also prove that I can help you, which will establish some credibility. 
you know, so to me, it's kind of hard to have only show people into your world without bringing some things into it. So I, I imagine that each one of these is going to be in there in some degree, maybe some more than others. Maybe I'm going to show you way more credibility than maybe bringing you into my world, what have you. But I, I, it's, I think it's very difficult to create a piece of content without those four things if we're talking about video content. And when it comes to post, yeah, I can post a listing and that's going to bring you into my world. I don't know if that's going to show you who I am necessarily. I think that's probably the challenges that most agents have with their posting. Yeah. And I think when people think about this, they think that it has to be only real estate topics. Um, we're going to talk in the next podcast of what to post and definitely what not to post if you're looking yeah. for actual ideas. Uh, but as far as the four quadrant, um, you're saying that this is what's going to separate them from the competition, that this is going to establish them as an authority to show them who you are, bring them into your world, prove that you can help them and invite them to take the next steps. Yeah. Yeah. Because most agents aren't doing it. You know, the ones that you see on the panels are the ones that you know, you, you know, like maybe one or two, um, the rest of them aren't doing it. And so if you want to instantly separate yourself, because again, like you talk about babe is nowadays people know dozens of realtors. If you're not the one that's constantly telling them, this is what makes me different. And this is my perspective. And this is how I help people. And, you know, me just kind of going through this process again, I'll, I'll repeat it, show them who you are, bring them into your world, show them how you can help and then tell, invite them, to take the next steps. I think the the fourth one is probably one of the most important. Like you can talk all day and, and I'm just, I love to talk to people and I'm talking about real estate all the time. Okay. But you're not asking for business. So I, 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 I think that those three are important. Know you like you and trust you, but I, I don't want to lose sight of the impact of the fourth piece, which is you need to have a call to action. Yeah. I think you will have some people listening that go, okay, I like the sound of that. I'm not really sure what that looks like though. Mm -hmm. Um, in a post. Um, so can you give me an idea of what, what is that? Like, give me an example of that in a, in a post. Okay. So let's talk about, um, we're foodies. We like to eat. So let's talk about you as a realtor, uh, doing a quick video of you going into a really great Mexican restaurant. This happens to be located outside of a neighborhood that you want to sell more in. Okay. You, so I'm going to do a short video. Hey, what's going on? This is Jason with, you know, influential agent. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, uh, this really great Mexican place. I like to come whenever I'm, you know, before I show a property or when I'm done doing, you know, showing a property here in this beautiful neighborhood, you've got to go try the fish tacos. They're amazing. And, uh, let me show you, let me show you inside this place, you know, Hey, that's so-and-so that's the, that's the manager. He's awesome. What's up? You know, it's, it's showing people all those elements, you know, Hey, I told yeah. you who I was, told you what I did. Hey, whenever I'm done showing listings in this neighborhood, you know, this is a really great restaurant located by this. Um, I think we get stuck so often in it. It's gotta be about real estate. It's gotta be about real estate. And it's all we talk about. And we lose the sight of the fact that it's also about the lifestyle that people are going to be living yeah. once they get that home. And so when yeah, you can sure. branch out, you could talk about restaurants, you could talk about things that personal views. Hey, you know, just to let you know, we've got, you know, uh, we've got a family member with special needs. And one of the reasons it's really cool about this neighborhood is the fact that they have got, you know, X, Y, and Z just located around. That's just definitely going to help you out in these times, whatever, you know, Hey guys, I've been on a health journey lately and, uh, so cool. We live in this neighborhood and right around we have got sprouts we've got trader joe's we've got all these really wonderful places we've got a farmer's market that happens every other month you know your your ideas of what you can talk about just completely blows up out of the water um which again okay. can talk about is that am i giving you enough examples i'm just kind of rapid yeah. firing well and you know would it be okay with you if i practice one because i'm just learning this as the audience is can i practice one of these with you Sure. Uh, using the same scenario that you just gave me as maybe a Mexican restaurant. So I'm going to try to hit all four, not that you have to hit all four, but I'm going to try to do that. And in that video would be, um, you know, like you said, Hey guys, I am here today at XYZ Mexican restaurant. I am Amber Joy with Influential Agent, and I have been selling real estate for over 20 years in Allen, Texas. And I 
you may not know this about me, but I am a Mexican food junkie. And I want to show you one of my favorite restaurants. And in particular, I love me some cheese dip. So we are going to be testing that along with some other amazing dishes in here to see um, what you would like. Then I go in, I can meet the guy, the owner, or we can try some different dishes. And then I might say at the end, all right, thank you so much for joining me for this. We hope you check out XYZ Restaurant. If you would like a list of my top five Mexican restaurants in Allen, Texas, all you have to do is go to XYZ.com, grab that list up, and we'll see you in the next episode. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, Trying and to connect did... with them on what I like personally, why I have credibility selling for 20 years in Allen, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call to action so... or info you mixed all that in and that was a it could be a short form video that could be a longer form video if you wanted to again depending upon the platform and sub feature that you're choosing you could adapt what you would say in in that video or in that so post if it's short form you would suggest that we do maybe just one of those things instead of like it, trying to fit all yeah four i don't think you I don't think you'd have time to introduce the manager or introduce other dishes. It's like, hey, if you're really looking for some amazing cheese dip, I've got the place for you. Boom. Located right outside of Star Creek in Allen, Texas is this, and the cheese dip is amazing. You know, you need to try this. Boom. Done. You know. All right. So is... I really like the, that four quadrant uh, video leadership quadrant quadrant. It's hard to say that word for me for some reason. Now we know consistency is key in social media marketing. So what processes and accountability measures can agents put in place to ensure that they can maintain a consistent presence on their chosen platform or sub feature, as you're saying? So I liked um, the phrase, I think it's James Clear who said it, is that you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. So if you're gonna Ooh, wanna be good. consistent in, right, that's so good. If you're gonna wanna be consistent or develop consistency, then you really just need a couple things. Number one, you need process or systems. And two, you need accountability. You know, what is your system for posting? Is it daily? Is it three times a week? You know, whatever it is, then what are the mechanisms that you were doing to ensure that you were going to do that system? Is it on your calendar? Do you have reminders? You know, do you have uh, equipment, you know, easily set up where I can do my, uh, my process? And then you've got to protect it. And this is something that you talk a lot about is, you know, if it's on your calendar, you got to fiercely protect it. Now, accountability you know, what's the mechanism for accountability? Am I going to get it with a coach? Am I going to get with someone that's going to hold me accountable or, like, you know, in my process, I've got a calendar that I put stickers on. And so I can visually see that I do a social media post. Yes, I did. You know, and there's a sticker. I get a sticker. That sounds so elementary <laughs> if I say that out loud. I get, a, I get a gold star for doing a social media post. <laughs> whatever works for you. What, no judgment. Whatever works. And so what I like about that is, you know, we got that, that big ass calendar. Um, that's the name of it. Don't get upset. <laughs> But it's this <laughs> massive calendar that shows you the entire year and one month takes up one line. And so I can see over the past week, two weeks, three weeks, was I accountable? Did I do my social media post? Or you see this massive gap of I got busy, which yeah. I've never understood that because you're always busy, you know, but did so you true. do what you wanted to do to get the business that you are saying that you want? And I see that you said, is it daily? Is it three times a week? I like that you say that because if you're starting with nothing, yeah, just starting somewhere and having accountability, even if it's only once a week, is better than you were yesterday. And that's what yeah. matters. So it's not about getting obsessed with the number. It's about making progress, track, deciding what it is, tracking it, and having accountability to it. Well, you've got to get good at it. And so, and so you know, I... And I've even been guilty of saying this too. It's like, you know, if you're just posting once a week, then pff, you're not really doing anything. Um, but if you're posting once a week, like you said, and you've never done that, then that's awesome. And, yeah. you know, you're posting once a week and you do that for three months. That's great. You'll find what you like. You'll find a ton of value in figuring out what you like to post, what you don't like to post. You'll, you'll start to discover your voice and your rhythm and your passion 
And then once you find that, then you'll start to do it more. Yeah. That makes sense. And I feel like you get more excited to do it more because you're seeing some traction. And when I say traction, people are commenting, people are noticing, and you might be getting leads. That's when you're going to get excited and you're going to want to do it more. We always say motivation works the opposite of what you think. You don't get motivated to do it before you start. You're going to feel motivation once you see the results and you're not going to see the results until you do the action. Um, that's for sure. So just pick it, pick what you want to do. It's better than yesterday. Start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. So just, I want to go back and just recap real quick. First, we talked about choosing the right platform. Uh, and then the sub feature of that platform, we talked about implementing the authority strategy, which is those four things to get people to know you, like you, trust you, and then your call to action. And then about developing consistency. Really, it is all about finding, you know, that piece or that component is, is going to help you the most when it comes to making sure that you can do this a lot. Now, as social media platforms evolve, Jason, agents need to be prepared to pivot whenever necessary. So how can agents determine when it's time to shift their strategies to and explore new avenues? Um, there's just so many different ones to choose from. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this. Uh, platform changes, all right? That's that's gonna be the, the topic of what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about platform changes. Okay, so um, you always need to be readily available to pivot. However, however, but, but. I was going to say, they're going to be like, pivot every week. <laughs> every week, pivot, pivot, pivot. pivot. Um, but it has to be data driven. It's not something that you feel or not something that, someone that you just saw on a panel that you immediately look up to said to do. That shouldn't be the cause of your pivot. Um, and, and probably the easiest example I can give this is Facebook business pages, okay? Back in the day, back in the day, I'm oh, sorry. Um, when Facebook business pages were a thing, 2010, 2011, they were amazing. Yeah. You could make them look like websites. Like you could put buttons on them. You could have people search for homes on them. You could like restrict someone from seeing your business page until they liked it and followed it. I mean, there were so many cool things you could do with Facebook yeah. business pages. And now, and today, less than 4% of anybody on Facebook sees a business page. Less than 4%. Now, this is not me saying this. This is Facebook's own data. So that would be a data-driven decision that says, eh, maybe I don't post on my business page uh, as a main strategy to what I'm doing now. Um, that's not a feeling that's saying, okay, I need to get in front of people. Uh, I can no longer get in front of people at a level that is going to warrant me taking the time out of my day to do posting on that. And, and I think that, gosh, I wish agents would, would look at that more as far as data goes versus like, I just don't feel it's working. Okay, well, that's great. What does the data say? Um, <laughs> that is a warranted shift into a different strategy. doesn't mean you have to leave Facebook. Um, Facebook business pages are way more effective for running ads from them. Uh, but as yeah. far as posting to it as a strategy, and again, I just want to be very clear. I'm not saying forget about your business page, get rid of them. Um, what I am saying is that it shouldn't be a main uh, focus of your marketing strategy, given the fact that Facebook has unilaterally given you data that says people aren't seeing your business pages anymore. And I think it's important to bring up that when you are looking at analytics or the numbers, or as you're calling it, the data to see if you should be pivoting, um, that's over the long term, right? You can't just try this for a week or even a month and no, sometimes it takes people uh, an entire year of trying a strategy before they really hit huge momentum. It seems to happen almost overnight for everybody watching, but for them, they were faithful for a year and then all of a sudden they hit massive momentum. Another thing I wanna remind people of is, is the data, it's not always about followers or likes because yeah. it only takes one person to see that video to give you a referral or to reach out to you to self-refer or use you for a real estate agent in a transaction. So I always look at the data as what is the return on investment? So even if you're not spending money and you're posting free content, that's return on investment for your time, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean that I have to have a million followers or even a hundred thousand followers. If I'm posting something 
and I'm getting interaction and or referrals that month, that's what matters is, is it working to bring you business, which is why you started doing it in the first place. Yeah, I, I love that you said that because, you know, I, I love the YouTube example where you have agents who really don't have a ton of subscribers, but their videos have got tens upon tens of thousands of views mm -hmm. um, and they get business from it. So if you're, your metrics should be more about engagement versus how many people like my stuff, you know, that's vanity metrics, the, the likes, the you know, the subscribers or the followers, those are vanity metrics. What we need to be focusing on is how many people are engaging with my with my content, which means engagement is how many times took the time out of their day to say something, type out words on what I said. And yeah. then did I have that conversation or how many people reach out based upon something I put out there to ask me a question more about it and I can get that conversation started. To me, those are a lot more effective metrics to follow Versus like, I got 10 new subscribers. I'm like, fantastic. How many business leads do you have? None. Okay. <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, glad I did that. <laughs> but you also don't want to be guilty of people who, like myself or other people, who try something for just a month or two months and then they completely give it up. Because what happens then is you didn't spend long enough on it. And what you're going to be two to three years down the line, you've tried a whole bunch of things, you're worn out, and you didn't give any of them enough time to, yeah. to have the consistency to see the momentum. Well, yeah, I think that's very smart. I mean, 90 days is a quarter, I'm going to spend a quarter doing this consistently. But again, you know, I'm doing this, you know, twice a week for 90 days. It's not binary. It's not, oh, did it work or did it not? It's I got to go back and look at those posts and say, okay, which posts resonated more than others? Not did they work or not. It's which ones resonated more than others. And you will find that let's say you had 40 posts, okay, in that 90-day period. And 10 of those posts were really a lot higher. And again, higher is relative. I'm not saying it went viral. What I'm saying is that all of your posts had roughly two to 300 views on it, but you had a certain percentage of those posts that had 800 or 1,000. Then it's not about abandoning that process. It's about then taking those videos or posts and figuring out, could I do more of that? Could I go into more detail? Could I you know, sidestep mm. that? So I would take those you know, percentage of posts. I would do those posts in a different way or in a you know, slightly off adjacent topic and then I would add some more posts for another 90 days and then look at it again. That is you refining your process, not just abandoning it because you didn't get the results that you got. Yeah. Yeah. And and can I ask you it, your opinion on this is not just or, or this topic in general is not just your opinion. We are basing this on what has worked for lots of top agents or top entrepreneurs across the country choosing a platform and being really good at that platform. So for example, a lot of people have heard of Levi. He's got his YouTube channel. You did not see him trying to be the real expert, trying to be the TikTok expert, trying to be the YouTube expert. When he gained momentum, it was after spending a year of solid posting weekly on YouTube and then he started seeing massive momentum the second year. You see the same thing with Glenda Baker. A lot of people have heard of her. And although she's on Reels, she put all of her focus on TikTok, grew a massive following there before she took them to other platforms. So this yep. is not just your opinion. This, I'm seeing that this is the trend that is allowing people to take off as they're trying to be good at just the one thing instead of trying to be good at all of them. Well, you would think it would actually relieve some stress. I, th I think the challenge for agents is twofold. Number one, um, desperation. I don't have enough business, so I'm really trying as much as I can to get business. Okay. Um, but also number two is oftentimes in the conversations that we have with agents, they're, they're so holding on tightly to what they've used, they, they used to do that they're, they're the, what they want is just out of reach. Mm. And, and it's, so we're having this conversation. I guarantee you, it's like, if you're not, I don't really like X, I'm not really on it. Okay. Well, delete your account. Oh, but I can't. Why not? Like, wh why? You know, it, that's, that's I deleted my Twitter. 
<laughs> that's my scorched earth uh, viewpoint on things. Is like if you're not using it, get rid of it because it's it, that means it allows you to focus more on this one thing. Um, you know, so so oh. that's always a challenge for some agents is they can't let go of these accounts that they've had forever, even though they're not using them, not seeing any results from them not being effective. It's not the one they're going to choose. And I just think that's a struggle. All right, bring us home on this topic. Is there anything else that's important for agents to know about this? Um, I, I think that enjoy the learning process. There's, there's only two ways to fail. You fail to continue and you fail to learn. And I love learning. And, and it's not just about succeeding or failing. I, I, I don't believe that you fail. I believe that you have an opportunity to learn from whatever just happened to you. And so that's what I would do is just enjoy the learning process. Just go all in, have fun, especially if mm. you're picking a, a platform that you enjoy and then you're picking a sub feature of that platform that you, that you have an idea that you'll enjoy and just go for it. And, yeah. and are you going to have a, do, uh, do you run the risk of having a very vocal minority of people going, why are you posting this? What do you got? You know, what, what gives you the right to talk about this? You've got to push that out. Um, you know, and, and just, can, and just go for it. I mean, that's like the, the big, the, what I love about marketing is that to me, it's just fun, you know, and, and <laughs> I get to try different things and get to figure out, you will find what's work. I just think most agents, when they, they want to know everything about a topic and then they'll try it versus you'll learn everything about the topic as you're trying it. Um, and just to go for it. That's great advice. Yeah. I like that. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for you today. So in conclusion, Jason, they are uh, picking a platform, mm -hmm. based, platform. On the two, based on the two criteria of which one do they like to be on? And secondly, um, where's their ideal audience hanging out at? And then recap the four things, Jason, that they need to use as the leadership video leadership quadrant really quickly. Show them who you are. That's going to show them your character and get them to know you. You're going to bring them into your world. That's how you connect. That's how they like you. You're going to prove that you can help, which is giving you credibility. And that's how they feel they can trust you. And then you need to invite them to take the next steps, which is your just call to action. All right. That's awesome. Next, they're going to be consistent by having some accountability. Choose when you're going to be posting and how you're going to be posting or which mm -hmm. sub -seat feature you're going to be using. And then always look at analytics to feel if you need to pivot or adjust your plan. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up the overall strategy of yeah. really honing in on why it's key for real estate agents to pick a platform and dig into a specific feature, nail down a solid strategy, keep things consistent and roll with the punches as the platforms change. Now by sticking to these basics, agents can make a big splash form genuine connections and see their business boom in today's fast paced digital world. All right, guys, if you have liked what you heard today, remember to subscribe to the podcast and listen to future episodes and share with a friend today. And Jason, I'll let you lead us out with your key saying today. Oh, yeah. Remember, this is a game of life. Make your move. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.